I do want to springboard to another topic though. And that's one that kind of grinds my gears a little bit more than anything. And that's queer theory, because again, I have, I have kids and this in particular is what I deal with, uh, not just personally, but also because it's there in front of them. It's in the books. It's at the schools. It's online. It's almost cultish how it's become in that regard. Let's start with you, Neil. First, what is queer theory? And what does it have in common with CRT uh, when it comes to the postmodernism of how it functions? Because these seem, they're different. Uh, and, and queer theory, you write about this, you guys mentioned this, that it seems to be a little bit more, I wanna say elusive, maybe that's the wrong word, but it seems more postmodernish uh, in that regard. So what are, you, what are your thoughts on that? And this is a great illustration of why you shouldn't just conflate all of these theories because they have their mm -hmm. separate histories, separate origins, separate concerns. And now they have, as we show in the book, they've really come together and coalesced in the last even 10, 15 years under an intersectional framework. So today, if you think about mm -hmm. a modern text on the critical race here, like uh, Kara Bridges, CRT, a primer, that book will have whole chapters on gender and look, at, look at her face look at her face look how she's like she's like mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And she's like i'm making my notes i'm just like i'm looking really interested yeah yeah really yeah <laughs> so no so fake tia primer that book will have whole chapters on gender and sexuality if you pick up a text on queer theory it'll have a whole chapter on race if you pick up a, cha a book on disability theory you'll have chapters on things like post-colonialism. So, so it's under this intersectional grid, these are all related topics and you can't separate them. So that's why we're seeing these all coming sort of as a, as a, a amorphous mass that we call wokeism. But, but, but historically, they did have separate origins. So where did queer theory come from? Uh, really, the, if the godfather of critical race theory was Derek Bell, the Harvard professor, uh, then the godfather of queer theory would be Michel Foucault, the postmodern French philosopher. And now he did actually write about sexuality and he was one of many French intellectuals in the 60s who campaigned. This is a while. Yeah, but see, they they try to, see how they try to say, like, you see how, see how, look, look, look. You see, RTMP3 puts this, right? And this is true, the Frankfurt School, right? That's the real origin of, like, critical theory, critical race theory, and all that stuff. But this guy's, like, Derek Bell, you know? <laughs> like, it's because they don't, they don't want to point out that it's coming from the Frankfurt School and these type of people because they don't want to admit that, how compromised they are, you know? Anyway. And he was one of many French intellectuals in the 60s who campaigned, this is a wild, but they campaigned to abolish um, age of consent laws. So there would no longer be an age of consent. And that for a while, that was a cause celeb among French intellectuals, including Foucault. Uh, and, and he did write about sexuality, but mainly he was concerned with how power works within society. And as you remember, that's a common theme among all critical theories, whether it's critical race theory, uh, critical pedagogy, and queer theory. So they're both concerned with how power yeah, operates that's in the subtle thing about it. That's the thing about it. Like, that, that's the thing about it. That's what they're trying to act like they're all different, but they're all based on this idea that it's like power. And oppression and stuff it really goes back to like marxism and that type of thing that way of thinking like it's like there's this group that's oppressing you and the marxist would say it's the bourgeoisie or whatever so then so they're oppressing you so you have to like revolt against them and and their their whole regime is evil right that's that's the mentality and then you put that into any kind of slot you can you can put it into the disabled slot the gay people slot the race slot, the women slot, feminism, you know, all of this stuff comes from that same idea, the Marxist idea that, you know, it's like, it's like there's this group that's oppressing you. And also, also the, the other thing that they have, with, which also comes from Marx, right, is this idea that there's this like, there's this bourgeoisie economics, there's the economics of the powerful, and then there's the economics of the oppressed which is the truth, you know? And so and so it's like there could be these two different versions of economics. So they 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 might have they might these rich people, they'll give you an, a version of economics that they think it works. But the but the poor people are in or the the proletariat that Marx would say, right? They, they'll say they'll say no 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 no, that's not real economics. Uh, Marxism is real economics and you guys are just pushing this fake lie economics because that's how, because you're empowered, you know? So that's, a, that's another thing that, because in that way of thinking, it's like, there's, there's two different truths. There's, there's the economics of the powerful and the economics of the poor and never the twain shall meet. There's no economics. That's just universally true for everyone. You know what I mean? So that, that, that gives birth to this idea of like, 
postmodernism where it's like the truth is a function of who is in power rather than there's no actual truth. It's just whoever's in power, they can impose their version of the truth on everybody else, you know, but it's foolishness. Ways to uh, stratify society, to produce the hey, oppressors and oppressed. Uh, but Foucault was- Hey, sorry, was, didn't you, were you asking me a question, Glory, to him, and then I forgot about it? Sorry, man, I, I forget. I think if, I feel like you asked me something, I forgot. Anyway. Much more deconstructive in his approach. He wanted to undermine uh, things like the very nature of truth, whereas CRT, these are legal theorists. They're not so much concerned with undermining what words mean, but but, but Foucault was. Okay, so he's the godfather. Uh, I think Tessa de Laurentiis coined the term queer theory in 1991, I want to say. And uh, there are a number of major figures within the you know, gender theory, gender studies, queer theory movement. The number one probably is Judith Butler, who is a, a currently uh, living uh, professor. I think she's at Berkeley right now. Um, but and, and so so what are the again central ideas of queer theory? The big one is a, a divorce between sex and gender, which actually goes back to the feminist, secondary feminists in the 60s. But they would say there's biological sex on the one hand and then gender, which is a different, totally, totally separate category that is about how society treats you. So you have sex biology versus gender, a social category that we just this bucket of male and female that is divorced from sex. But then number two, gender is not just a social category, it's an oppressive social category. So men are valorized as strong, independent, leaders, competent, intelligent, rational, whereas women, according to queer theorists and feminists, women are, are, are conceptualized as weak, helpless, uh, maybe not very smart, emotional, hysterical, etc. So it's an oppressive category. Now, and then queer theory, and then queer theory goes farther and says, there's not just even just one category called gender, there's actually many categories. There, there's sex, number one, and there's a spectrum. There's XX, you know, female, and there's XY, male, but then there's also intersex conditions where people or children are born with indeterminate biology. It's a spectrum. There's a spectrum of gender identity, right, right, how right, you feel. Right. Do you feel that. like masculine or feminine or somewhere in the middle? There's a spectrum of sexual uh, gender expression. So how do you express your felt gender? You could dress in masculine ways. You could dress in feminine ways. You could dress in androgynous ways. And then there's a sexual orientation. You got a separate axis. You can be homosexual or heterosexual or bisexual or pansexual. And this is where you get actual figures like the gender unicorn that is being used as a teaching tool for kids where they have a purple unicorn and they'll have in its head, they have uh, gender identity is how you think of yourself. You have sex, which is like your genitalia, what, you know, you know, masculine or feminine. You have your expression, how you act out your gender, and then you have your orientation and the heart, what you, who you're attracted to. These are all completely separate categories. Whereas traditionally, you have you know the male bucket and the female bucket, and the male bucket determines how you your biology and how you think about yourself, how you express your gender, and who you are supposed to marry. And the female, and so traditionally, in, in Christian worldview, you have just two categories: is exclusive, all encompassing, and it determines everything about how you see yourself. Whereas queer theory has now split those in almost an infinite number of categories. Uh, and there's a lot more there. I, I was close with this. And this probably is what is the real haymaker I was told on Twitter. And I'm sure it made you really upset, but it's there. These people like, I don't know, like these guys are supposed to be on our side, you know? He's supposed to be trying to explain this in a way that we can understand. He just, I don't know if you guys get understand what he just said, but I mean, I get what he was saying, but it's very confusing. They don't, he doesn't even explain it properly. It's just, it's more confusion with these people, you know? Anyway, look, one thing I'll say, what he was talking about, he's trying to say that, okay, the fe this is true. The feminists are the ones that, that decided that, okay, there's sex, there's biological sex, and then there's gender, which is not biological, but cultural. And people are going to say to me, that that's just some weird thing that they made up, but it's actually true in my opinion. And I think the Bible supports this idea as well, but it's not, but I would also argue that gender is kind of tied to, to sex and whatever your gender is, whatever your sex is, that's what your gender is as well. But I mean, they are different, you know, but anyway, anyway, let's go. Because queer theory is rooted in postmodernism, it wants to deconstruct not just gender as a category, but all categories and all norms. I want to expose how these are all arbitrary. And that would include categories of age. So mm -hmm. there's, right. So you not saw the old. quotes. We quoted right. numerous texts, mm -hmm. very important texts in queer yep. theory, where queer mm -hmm. theorists themselves will say outright that yes, there's an open debate within queer theory over the ethic, whether, whether it's ethical uh, or whether pedophilia is ethical. Uh, there's a, a line from Jagos where she says, can children, this is the actual quote, 
can children be sexualized in an ethical way? That's an open question. Uh, should we call it pedophilia or intergenerational sex or man boy love? You know, those are those are all very loaded terms. So she's asking which of those should we use even to describe these these affections and these orientations. So that I know that you'll go on MSNBC and they will tell you that's scaremongering. That's just you're just you know that's just bigotry. And we want to tell you it's not scaremongering. We can give you dozens of sources that will say outright, yes, this is debated. Now, why? No, and it's not merely why is it a slippery slope? No, their project is the destabilization of all norms. If you can't decide what a man is anymore, you don't know what a woman is. Those are those categories are in, in contested. They're in flux. How then can you establish this firm, black and white, sharp division between adult and child? Mm -hmm. Once you cross. This threshold was 18, 16, 17 and a half, 19. Well, how can you argue that we can't tell what a woman is, but we can tell what a child is? And, mm -hmm. and magically, when you're when you're 17.99 years old, you're a child. But when you're 18.01, then you're an adult. Now, that's their mm -hmm. right to say, hey, that's more arbitrary than male and female. And they want to say it's all arbitrary. It's just, it is inevitable conclusion of their own logic, which must, of course, just be rejected wholesale by Christians. Yeah, you know, it's funny because, oh man, so much to say on that. Um, <laughs> you see why it grinds my gears, right? Um, you know, it makes it very, it's very interesting because here we are with this gender identity crisis and you have minors, you know, puberty blockers, gender affirming care. It's very interesting that you mentioned the terminology. But, but, you know, this you just, is the thing. See, this is the thing. With, uh, this is the thing why I don't like these people. Why they just, they just, they're acting like they're fighting against this thing. Right. But they go along with all the things that lead to this. You know what I'm trying to say? Like, like this guy, I don't know. I don't know if these guys would, would fight against the idea of sexual orientation, because that's another thing that's just got no basis in any kind of scientific facts. But they somehow have decided to push this on everybody, and now it's like we're supposed to just believe that there's these things called sexual orientations, but there's no evidence for this. You know, it's just this is a made up thing. It's just literally made up. You know, but so. But then these guys will like, I don't know what, I don't know what these two people here would say about sexual orientation. Maybe they'll deny it too. So fair enough. But they go along with all these other things that kind of lead to this way of thinking. They go along with like all this kind of weird way of th ways of thinking that we have in academia and stuff. Like, I don't know. Anyway, moving on. Just change the terms and right. propaganda and all of a sudden it's all okay. And, uh, I think it would be very that that seems obvious that that would be the next step is to go for age because that's the argument. Oh, but they're minors. You know, you need you need parental consent to get a tattoo, but you can mm -hmm. go get hormone blockers. And it's very interesting that 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 naturally seems like the next step for them. You know, and it, 20 years ago, had you told these same people that are advocates for this today that they would be believing that gender was fluid, they would have said, you're you're fear mongering and that's impossible. And so it's. I'm glad you mentioned the slippery slope. I actually wrote that down <laughs> to ask you about it. So you jumped right but on it's, that. And it's good. not a slippery slope. Slippery slope is when no. you're like, if you start, mm -hmm. you know, eating potato chips, next thing you know, you'll be an alcoholic drunk using crack. <laughs> like, well, but why? Wait, what? Well, because they're both unhealthy. Well, there's no logical connection. But we're yeah. pointing out in yeah. the book, we show there is an extremely logical yeah. connection. Right Another that. example would be, they talk about agency, freedom. Yep. It, all these movements are liberatory, right? You want to give people agency. And we're like, amen, yes, agency. Well, what mm -hmm. about the freedom of children to choose their sexual partners? So that's different. Well, how? They actually have a category called adultism, like ableism, racism, mm -hmm. sexism. There's adultism. So when adults impose their values on children and say, mm -hmm. oh, but you're innocent, you're not sexual, you don't have the you don't have the agency to choose sexual partners. And they would say that's oppressive. You know, you have to give them the freedom to choose whether they want to be a and they are sexual beings. It's there's some really, frankly, sick stuff in the literature. And we our publisher made us uh, censor a little bit of it. You can tell mm -hmm. what's there, but it is. Yeah. And then the last thing I'll say, Melissa, yeah, it's yeah. a whole field called queer theology where professing or like, Christians. Or like, or like, like, you know what they'll do? They'll, like, that's like, I don't know what these guys are all about. I don't know them personally, what their, what their deal is. But these people, like, so there'll be these Christian guys will come up and say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the gender, the gender thing is is dumb, and we should get rid of it, and it doesn't make any sense, right? So, so they look like they're on your side, but then they'll go and and then you find out that they're like communists or something else. You know what I mean? That's what I mean. Like they'll, like they don't really, I don't know, they they're not consistent in their in their criticism. So they'll criticize something from these people, we'll apply but they're not. But the, the criticism that they're making, they, they'll, on the other hand, on and some other thing that they believe, it'll be like, 
they they completely contradict that way of thinking, you know? So anyways, maybe I'm not explaining myself very well here, but... By these methods of queer theory, not just to, you know, biblical gender stuff, but just biblical theology, and they will question categories like good and evil and sin and redemption. And are these even stable categories? And they will say outright, we're taking the methods of queer theory, and of course they're all affirming, but it's more than that. They're now going beyond just being LGBTQ affirming and saying, let's start asking, oh, there's a quote, there's a quote where it says we should conceive of the Trinity as a divine orgy. Hmm. It is just, it is just perverted. Unreal. I'm sorry. Wow. Yeah, no, perverted is a very it's succinct a, way to put Pat it. Actually, when I was reading up, we were up until like 4 a.m. reading queer theory literature, and he called me the next day. He was just, I just had forgotten that some of this stuff is just sick. Yeah. And it's yeah. true. We had to go to a Bible study to sort of cleanse his palate. But anyway, so. Yeah, I needed a shower afterwards. Yeah. Pat, that was a, that was a whole thing. I probably <laughs> talked to you guys about this for the whole time. But Pat, I want to know if uh, you have anything to add uh, on that topic. Yeah, I, I would mention that you mentioned the use of language and how language is yeah. power and the, the changing of language to soften things that historically have had mm -hmm. uh, perversion connected to it. We see the term minor attracted persons trying to mm -hmm. replace, uh, you know, words around pedophilia and pedastry and so forth. I do think it's important for us to recognize two things. Certainly, there are people that are part of the LGBTQIA plus community that think that pedophilia should be outlawed and that it is a terrible thing, that it is grossly immoral. So we don't want yeah, like to they'll, like they'll go along with that type of thing, like LGBTQIA plus. He literally said that whole thing. He just knew the whole thing and he said it. It's like, dude, man, just look, we're all like we're all on the same side here. You don't have to like. You know, I don't know. Like this guy's like he's basically so they they kind of they go along with all their weird stuff, and then they'll turn around and start talking like this. But it's like nobody cares about this. You you've already gone along with all their weird stuff already. So now you come on this podcast to talk about this. Nobody cares. Nobody in power cares. They don't care. You know. Now it's true. Like the right's kind of making a comeback now, so they're gonna push back a lot of that stuff, but. At the end of the day, they're not going to push you back far enough that it's going to make any kind of dent. And by the time the next thing, like by the time the right is kind of fall asleep a little bit, and then the left is going to come back, and it's just going to be even worse. You know, we'll see. Leah should be outlawed, and that it is a terrible thing, that it is grossly immoral. So nah, we don't nah, want to nah. lose sight of the, the fact that there's nah, people he in won't, the he won't, community that he won't was, reply to me anymore. Man, he's done with that. Say that pedophilia is a is a terrible thing. In saying that, we also need to, to reinforce what Neil said, that pedophilia and the attack on age as something constructed today as being oppressive relative to giving power to adults and taking power mm -hmm. away from children, this is part mm -hmm. and parcel of the natural outworking of queer theory. This is not mm -hmm. something that we are lay, kind of layering on to the discipline to try to be provocative by mm -hmm. no means. In fact, we're trying to underscore what I just said. There are people in the gay community that certainly think that a pedophile should go to prison. Uh, at the same time, queer theory does, in fact, make a strong attempt to destabilize all norms. And that will mean opening the door to trying to legitimize and legalize uh, sex between adults and non-adults and, and children. And this is not. Yeah, like, this, is dumb, this is dumb, too. This is dumb, too. Like, like, I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. I understand that. This is a very popular talking point among Christians, but this is just making us look like crazy people because everybody knows that they're not going to make that law. You know what I mean? So when they, when people, when Christians come out and say like, oh, oh, the queer theorists are saying this, and that means they're going to make the law now, you know, it's like, you just look like, you look like unhinged, you know, like, like, like you don't know how the world works. You think there's going to be a law in the Congress that says that, adults can have sex with kids that'd be ridiculous but now if they're trying to say that could come along in another 30 years 40 years 50 years well that's also dumb it's like why are we even talking about this right now we got problems right now it is part and parcel of the discipline and so we want that balance that we recognize that there are people in the gay community that obviously think this is evil and wrong yet at the same time queer theory in 20 bc they wouldn't have been, they, they don't think of it as like a, as like a category. Like there's no, per, they don't think of, there's no sexual orientations back then, you know, but they would just say, okay, there's men that have sex with men and men that have sex with women. And there's most men back then would have sex with both, you know, or I mean, in the Greco Roman kind of culture, right. They would have sex with both men and women. So it's not really, they didn't think of it the way we do, you know, they didn't think of it as, they certainly didn't think that people had sexual orientations. They just thought people could have sex 
you could have sex with women, you could have sex with men. And and uh, yeah, for the Spartans and people like that, a lot of the Greeks and stuff, they actually thought that the men, sex with men was like better. You know what I mean? They thought that that was like for love and, and sex with women was for reproduction. You know, the Spartans especially, right? Anyway. Does in fact uh, support what we're saying here. And it is logical based upon the rubric of critical theory. It is a natural mm -hmm. step. And then uh, nothing is it's left untouched. Or it's a natural step. If we, if, we, if we start thinking too much critical theory, the next thing you know, they're going to make a law that says they can legalize sex with kids. It's so dumb. Like, this is why this is why they don't have, like, good critiques. You know, they have these dumb critiques. Like, let's, let's talk about a good critique. Like, look, what is the scientific evidence for sexual orientation? What can you prove? Can you prove that you're gay? Can you prove that? Can you can you take that like a can you do like a test on your blood or something? No, you can't, right? So what what's the evidence for this? Why why should I believe this? You know, but these these people, they will never talk about that. They will never just say, hey, wait a minute, by the way, by the way, guys, you know, by the way, there's literally no evidence that anybody is any kind of sexual orientation whatsoever there's no evidence for it but why but they these fools won't talk about it they'll just start talking about oh the gay theory the queer theory guys like michelle foucault is gonna like make your kids go gay or something it's so dumb man or, or undisturbed and as neil mentioned <laughs> even theology uh yeah sorry brother god bless man sorry it was kind of boring eh? anyway and Christian theology. Now will be contextualized in mm -hmm. queer language, queer discourse, and queer ideas, and in very perverted ways, but it will be positioned as something that is a good. This is true, too. This is true, too, what RTMP3 is saying. And you know, like people like, you know, there was that guy, lots of people, even in our culture, right? Like, uh, there's that guy, that guy who did uh, Great Balls of Fire, this, the guy who sang that, Jerry Lee Lewis. He married a little, a little girl. Cause she was like 14 or 15 and Elvis, Elvis married, um, uh, Priscilla Presley when she was underage and, uh, R Kelly, R Kelly married, but well, I guess he got convicted now. So I guess that's kind of okay. But thing is when he married her, it wasn't a big, it wasn't like a thing. Like everybody was up in arms over it. They just got it. They got away with it for a long time. Right. And then eventually she divorced him or whatever. Or they annulled it or something. I don't know. But <laughs> And liberating. <laughs> and empowering yeah. and it's it's quite disturbing anyway so that's why these people will never make any kind of any kind of like important critique of queer theory or whatever good good afternoon, good even my fellow believers like that kind of my brothers and sisters in christ like, come on they'll just say that kind of stupid stuff like um oh hey you know the queers are gonna make it so that that we can have sex with little kids and then the whole society is gonna go down <laughs> but it's like Dude, that's never going to happen. That's just a pipe dream in your brain. But why don't you talk about the real things? Because they can't, you know? If that guy, if these guys start, start saying that sexual orientation is a myth, then they will they will be run out of their field, you know? They, they won't be allowed to go back to work and stuff. <laughs> that's good. God bless. That's, that's awesome, bro. I'm so glad.